up everybody, it's Stefan here from Ma De Fame, and today I'm introducing you guys to my 2011 Porsche Panamera Turbo. Let's jump into it, let's go. Just a quick history on the Porsche Panamera Turbo. This car actually introduced what it was like to have a four-door car perform like its sports car counterpart in the lineup. The great thing about Porsche is they start with the 911. So every car that is produced from there carries the DNA of that 911 through it. Now this car is the furthest it could possibly be outside of a Cayenne or a Macan from a 911 because the engine is in the front, the gas tank is in the back, it has four doors, it seats four people, and it's big. And it weighs a lot too. The car weighs about 4,200 pounds. Now that might not sound like a lot, but back then you gotta remember this car was engineered in 2009 and then brought to market in 2010 to the US. That was a lot for a Porsche back then. When this car came out, the critics raved, oh my God, it's not a Porsche. What is Porsche doing? La, 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 la. Well, let's fast forward. The year is now 2018, and now they make a $200,000 Porsche Panamera Turbo that everybody loves. The funny thing is this car, when brand new, I have the sticker still, the window sticker on this car, $152,000 for this car back in 2011. Me, I bought it pre-owned uh, a couple years ago um, from a good Porsche dealer, but I bought it certified pre-owned. So the car, when I bought it, came with a two-year warranty. I guarantee you, if you buy one without warranty, it's probably gonna be the worst decision you ever make. So I would suggest sticking with a car. If you're gonna buy one pre-owned, then make sure it has warranty on it like this did. Uh, the next thing that I wanna talk about is performance on the car. 500 horsepower, 516 foot-pounds of torque out of a V8 twin turbo. The V8 is a 4.8 liter, so it's not huge, it's not small, but the turbos make up all the difference. The big number in this car that you gotta think about though is a 516 torque. A lot of cars uh, back then had horsepower. Uh, I would say its biggest competitor at the time was the V10 M5, the E60 M5, which also had 500 horsepower. But the thing is, the torque was way lower. So this car, I've walked on V10 M5 stock for stock and I've even walked on lightly modified V10 M5. So this car, when it came out, it was raved about because the performance had the ability, it was keeping up on track with base model 911s. Granted, this is a turbo, so way more power. Another thing I wanna to talk to you guys about it are the mods on the car. The car so far uh, is lowered. What I did was use lowering links. It basically tricks the suspension into thinking it's riding too high which allows me to lower the car down to where I want it. The best application for this car, if you do want to do this though, I would say is probably the module because you have way more control. You can adjust it like uh, front, rear, and you can get that thing down low, which I do intend to do the module at some point, but the module for this car is at least $1,300. So that's a big buy. The car is on EDC wheels, three piece forged custom wheels. These wheels are 22 by nine and a half in the front and then 22 by 11 and a half in the back. So really, really wide uh, wheels in the back. If you notice, I like my wheels to poke. What I built the wheels for is for the car to be slammed though. And because I don't have that module, it's not slammed. So therefore the wheels sometimes look like it sticks out a little bit too much, but 
I mean, to me, I love the way it looks. It looks crazy on the road, and it looks so brilliant. Check this video out where I installed the pedal commander in this car. These cars actually have a lot of like pedal delay dialed into them. It's supposed to keep the car comfortable and not sudden. It also makes the car a little bit slow on takeoff. Well, with that pedal commander in there, this thing is like jumping. Like it's like, jump just watch the video, you'll see. Next thing I wanna kinda of talk about, we gonna need to jump in the car for. So let's do that now. All right, y'all, so let's get this party started right, man. And that is inside the Porsche Panamera Turbo. I would say one of the, this right here has to be like the part that makes the car worth it. I say that because the interior on this car is where I fell in love with it. Um, I mean, we could start out just with the aesthetics of the interior. This cognac leather and this cognac leather everywhere. Cognac is the color. By the way, dashboard, the steering wheel, the upper door cards, the lower door cards, the door pockets. I mean, just everywhere. Now, something that you will notice if you get in the lower models, the dash here in this car, including even coming down the waterfall here, is all leather. Uh, that's because it is a turbo model. If you go into the 4S, the 4, anything below GTS, I believe, uh, it's all hard plastic. Um, that's where they save money and that's how they make up the price difference between the cars on things like that in the interior So a lot of people say oh, I'll just get the 4s. It's this no if you've seen the interior on the 4s It looks the same but start touching stuff and you'll notice it is very very different funny story that when I was gonna buy this car I could have gotten uh, for the same money uh, 2014 uh, S uh, 4s so that right there would have been the V6 uh, twin turbo that they came out with for 2014. But what I couldn't stand were the hard plastic parts. It's just, it it drove me crazy. So I was like, yeah, no, I'll go with the, uh, the other model, which is the, I'll go with a little bit of an older model and get a turbo, um, which I did. So with that, I also got like the Alcantara roof. The whole roof is like suede. It's, it's like sexy as hell. And in addition to that, the turbos have double pane glass. So if you notice, it is super duper silent in here. This car feels like luxury. It really does. It gives you the look, the turbos give you the luxurious feeling on the inside. One of the other favorite parts of this car, uh, aesthetic wise, has to be the natural olive wood that's in this car. Yo, it's so sick. So it's like a, it's a, it's a no gloss, just a natural wood finish. And man, I tell you, I love it. It goes so well with the cognac. Um, and in addition to that, the fact that everything is the same color, the floors, the seats, the dash, everything, except for the roof, which is a brighter, like tan color. That's like the sand color that you find in most of the tan interiors on these cars. So this is not the normal like tan interior that you see on most of the Panameras. This is a deeper, darker color. And to me, that's what it like sold me on it. But in addition to aesthetics um, and kind of segueing into technology, this car was very early on with its technology. Buttons upon buttons upon buttons everywhere. Like this car was engineered and came out in 2010. So it was like unheard of to see this many buttons in a car that actually was intuitive. It's not like hard to know where everything is. You spend a couple minutes and you kind of know where everything is. In addition to that, it has the digital display. Like right now, I'm looking at the navigation in one of the uh, five pods that's here. You got in the middle, in true Porsche fashion, you have a tachometer, which tells you your res. Because in racing, that's what you're focused on, more so when to shift and keeping the car in an optimal, uh, in an optimal position and ready to take off or exit any corner. So in true Porsche fashion, that, that is in this DNA as well. Um, but it does have a little digital display on the bottom that shows miles per hour. Um, and then to the right of that is what I'm talking about, which is the navigation screen, which then changes. You can change it to different things. That controls um, either the radio in a car, you can see your climate, you can see just so much information. And uh, that was pretty early on back then. And still to this day, people get in a car and they're like, wow, it looked like a spaceship in here. Because it does. I mean, I love it. 
the other thing about I would say about driving this car is you can forget. You could forget that you are in a you know a 500 horsepower performance sports sedan. You can forget that because of the way it feels. Because it just feels so normal. It rides so nice. And I don't have no additional mics right now. I'm using the regular mics on the camera. Because it's so quiet in here, I don't need it. Like it's just it's just that sealed up, man. I mean, whew, love it. In addition to that, of course, you know, the heated and the AC seats and all that. It just, it just make you feel like so. But, you know, I just wanted to give y'all that overview of what it's like, you know, regularly driving this car before we start pushing it. So the next thing I want to talk to you guys about with the ride is the suspension and how adjustable it is. Uh, this particular car has Sport Chrono. So that means that uh, with Sport Chrono, the Sport Chrono package, you get, whenever you see the clock on the dashboard of the Porsches, uh, that means Sport Chrono, it has like lap timers, all that kind of stuff. Um, but what I like it the most for is the ability to have Sport and Sport Plus. So Sport uh, from the normal comfort driving mode tightens up the suspension, uh, increases throttle response, which all Porsches have. But with Sport Chrono, you get a Sport Plus, which is engineered and geared for the racetrack. So what it does is it'll hold the gear um, and any gear that you need to be in to be optimal to exit the corner with the most power possible. As the suspension tightens up to a track mode, and um, um, in addition to that, the throttle response is like super snappy. And that, that's excluding the pedal commander. With the pedal commander, it's ridiculous. Yes, that's the, I would say that as far as the suspension goes, it is an air suspension in the turbo models. Um, in the lower models, uh, it's a spring and um, spring and shock combination. But in the turbo model and I believe GTS models as well, it's air suspension. So it's so much adjustability. And for me, one of the most favorite things is the car is lowered. With the lowering, one of the best things that I have the ability to do uh, is speed bumps. I can raise the car up with the air suspension at a touch of a button. I could literally just uh, touch the suspension buttons into comfort mode and it'll raise all the way up. Um, in sport mode, it stays at that same height, but in sport plus, it slams the car down. That thing amazing. Love that part of uh, the sport chrono and just the adjustability. As you guys know, with Cheapo Kitty or Humble Pie, both of those cars are really low and uh, they're spring and coil, I mean coil and uh, shock combination. So I don't have that adjustability. So I love it in this car. And now I guess we can get to the party piece of things, right? Uh, the, 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 the power. Um, the way this car delivers power, uh, it can have, if you just, you know, if you lead a car in comfort mode and you just drive normally, it can deliver power at a at a you know luxurious wasp rate of speed like it'll it'll whisk you up now put the car in sport plus and it'll more hit like it is like the initial takeoff of this car i'm pretty sure if you guys have seen the race video if you have it click that now actually um the race video between this car and cheapo kitty cheapo kitty has that's my dodge challenger hellcat by the way that car has 200 additional horsepower 200 additional horsepower and you'll notice and that's a supercharged car so most cars have turbo lag and all that kind of stuff so it's kind of odd to say this but even with it being a supercharged car cheap this car which is a turbo actually gets out quicker off the line than cheapo kitty but forget that we got some road ahead of us let's take advantage of it Right now we're in sport mode and we're gonna hit some of these turns. This car's abilities are ridiculous. Like, the corners just disappear hard on the brakes, going into the corner. It holds the gear for you in sport. I mean, this car, man, its capabilities are just ridiculous. We coming up on some uh, traffic now. When this car came out, a lot of people said, oh, it's not a real Porsche. Uh, it's not gonna carry the driving dynamics of a Porsche. Yo, BS. This car, I've driven 911s, 997s, 996s, and 991. I've driven them all 911s. And this car 
it is like a direct one for one correlation. The only difference is you feel the weight and also the weight transfer. Because 911's engine is in the rear, it transfers weight differently. You drive the car with the throttle, whereas this car, because it has the weight in the front of the engine, it can have the ability to push on track once it reaches its limits. Whereas the, uh, the 911's, they can understeer, whereas this car has the ability to oversteer, but it's pretty easy to correct with, uh, with the throttle. I know you can't hear much because the car is so sealed up. Um, I don't have the sport exhaust. Um, most GTS's have that, and GTS's are just louder because they're naturally aspirated. All right, looks like we about to start opening up a little bit again. As soon as we pass these cars. Little brake here, slide into it. This car has a nice move around. It's not like, jeez. It's a, it's a, it's a very, very, very quick, quick car. We got it. We got it. Handles the bumps well, even on 22s. But that's because of the suspension. It's that good. The suspension is just that good in this car. Whew. <laughs> All right, let's go back at it again. One thing that I forgot to mention also is that with the uh, Sport Chrono package, you get launch control, but forget that. It's just so confidence inspiring too is the other thing, right? never feel like you're out of control in this car. You always feel like you got it. Which I love. I love and how it picks up such a rate of speed so quickly for such a big car. This car, for its size and its weight, should not be able to do what it can do. It just shouldn't. It shouldn't be this, like, this quick. It's ridiculous. All right, so this one is a hard, over a hump, into a turn. You see that? Still handled it, no problem. Over another hump, to a blind corner, settled, nice, no worries, no cares. We could bring it down a little bit. You guys get the point. So you've seen how this car performs. I mean, you've seen it racing, uh, to which of course it didn't win with a car that has you know 200 more horsepower. But did you see what it did from a dig? This car, I like to refer to this car as a dig monster. Porsche's PDK uh, transmission with their launch control and their all wheel drive, there's not many cars that can get out the way this car gets up and leaves. With more horsepower, there's no reason. This car consistently runs 11.9s, uh, low 11, like 11.92, 11.91, and that's like at 117.6 miles an hour. There's no reason why this car cannot do 11.5s, 11.4 with a little bit more power. And in addition to that, if I were to put like a, a drag radio on this car, even not even a full drag radio, just like a, a, a Telio R888 or a, NT, a Nitto NT05R or Mickey Thompson, this car would launch even harder. It's already pretty violent the way that it moves its weight and launches. But, you know, all in all, man, I, I just, I can't say it enough. I can't say it enough that this car does it all. It does it all. So if this, this is like the perfect, if you're a car enthusiast, um, you're only gonna have one car and you need that car to do it all, whether it's going out to dinner, quarter mile track days, circuit racing track days, uh, 
just driving to do your local errands, going to car shows. It does it all and it does it all flawlessly. Flawlessly, no issues. Um, in the last two years, I've driven a car about uh, 14,000 miles. So that's not a ton. So that's why I say I really can't talk that much, but this car is fully under warranty uh, because it is a certified uh, Porsche. Uh, they call it their qualified program. But anyway, this car is that. So it came with um, two years of warranty, which uh, comes up pretty soon, which I'm afraid of. But no issues with the car, like nothing. Not one thing. The only thing I've done is change the oil. <laughs> That's it. So as far as reliability with the mileage that this car has, which is now 48,000 miles, none. Like no issues whatsoever. What's up, everybody? It's Stefan here from Mod to Fame, and you just watched a video from our latest series called Modified Car Reviews. Well, what is Modified Car Reviews? Well, it's actually when we feature cars that have actually been built performance-wise, aesthetics, I mean, you name it, that's been done to the car. We actually consider that a modified car or car built. If you're interested in having your car be featured on Mod to Fame, it's pretty simple. You just hit the email, support at modtofame.com. That's showing up right now. Send us a couple images of your car and a little bit of information on your build. And if you're selected, we'll reach out to you. Keep in mind, we are in the Northeast. So we're keeping it right now in New York, New Jersey, Connecticut. But anyway, also while you're on the website, you might as well grab some of this merch, like what I'm wearing right now. This is the Black Edition t-shirt. Uh, whatever I was wearing in the video, I'm not sure which one it is. It could have been one of the hats. It could have been a different shirt. All of it is available right now at ModTheFame.com. So go ahead and grab that for yourself. Anyway, it's your boy Stefan here from Mod the Fame. And if you like this video, you know what to do. Like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so you don't miss any more videos. But until the next one, we about to jump in this modified Durango, and we out, we out.